to offer you a very special welcome today because today, in a very particular way, our whole service is a teaching. With words, with music, with Heather's singing, with Kim and Nicholas's extraordinarily beautiful instrumental playing, we're going to learn something about silence. And we're also going to learn something about silence from silence itself. So I wanted to start today by offering you just a very short talk, just a very few thoughts, really. I don't even want them to have the solidity of a talk. Just some thoughts that might allow you to bring your mind to a deeper understanding of silence. And you know, it's impossible for me at least to think about silence without my mind first going to that incredible phrase in the book of Psalms in the Hebrew Bible. Psalm 46, verse 10. Be still. Be still and know that I am God. In other words, God can only speak to us and affirm divine presence when we allow our minds to settle and be still. And that same psalm begins with an almost equally marvelous phrase. God is our refuge and our strength. And here it comes, and ever present, ever present to help us in our trouble. That is a totally unconditional promise to all of us, ever present to help us in our troubles. And then maybe 2,000 years later in the 14th century, 2,000 years or give or take a century or three, from when the psalmist was speaking and giving us those divine words, that divine message, we hear Meister Eckhart, oh, so profound a mystic that he also belongs to all of us, just as David does. And he said, of all things on earth, silence most resembles God. Silence most resembles God. So in our immensely crowded, busy, hectic, exaggerated world, where subtlety is so often lost, how should we hear those words? And how should we make them of our own time, of our own life? of our own bodies and experiences. Some of you may even have difficulty with the word God that I seem to be using with such assumptions. And perhaps for you, the unnameable one, the source, the ground of being, the eternal one, arouses less thought. And arousing less thought is part of what I'm talking about here. Because even our movement with that word tells us something precious about stillness and the stillness, the depth of stillness that only silence allows. It's from that place of stillness that silence allows that we can give to one another the gift of presence. The gift of presence that goes beyond words. Words can even interrupt it, as I'm interrupting it myself right now in talking about it. But the gift of presence, of grace, of connection, of even devotion and love comes through presence. It's beyond words. And I think we also need to remember that silence itself 
with all its gifts of stillness arising from stillness and its gifts of stillness. But silence is never still. It's not an absence of noise. In fact, it's a way of being. It's a way of being that we can invite ourselves to live. And that means that we can meet the world from a place of stillness and of silence, but silence can be our default position even when everything around us is very unsteady. That is what gives us the steadiness that we so desperately yearn for. But in order to discover this steadiness, we also need sometimes to put silence at the top of our agenda and not just fit it in. And why do we do need to do that? Because we need also to discover that silence is not neutral. Silence can also be incredibly painful. We can use silence to distance other people. We can use silence to punish other people. We can use silence to shut them out and exile them. We can use the silence of ignorance, not to care. So silence in its vastness encompasses everything. And I think in its infinite vastness, we are pointing to something when we remember Master Eckhart's words. In its infinite vastness, vastness beyond our human imagining, that encompasses everything and all of who we are. Inside silence, we can feel lonely. Inside silence, we can also feel profoundly met. We can feel divinely met. We can feel and experience divine grace. We can also find that place of refuge that Psalm 46 promised us. And in this, and only through our own experiences, we can also discover and rediscover again and again and again that it is not simply an absence of noise. It is much more what we do with thought as it arises and we allow it to fall. It's whether we cling to what distresses us or we allow the soul itself to soothe us. As a state of being, silence is a choice that we really need to make repeatedly. And in making that repeatedly, we are also making ourselves available to be beacons of peace. And today, 20th of September, we are on the eve of the International Day of Peace. So what I am talking about is quite significant, is profoundly significant for our world. Because the very least we can do in terms of our own spiritual commitment and practice is to bring a more peaceful attitude, a more peaceful way of being, a more peaceful commitment to life in order to serve our world within yourself and within me is a place of perfection, is a place of perfect peace. And that is the place we need to live from. That is the place we need to know. Silence is one of our most profound experiences. It is uniquely precious. It is uniquely fulfilling. I cannot give it to you. You can give it to yourself. And you do this by remembering. Blessed be.